A new day is dawning in library science. As benefits of computerized handling of library data are made available to libraries throughout the country, with cataloging data flowing from the Library of Congress to thousands of other libraries. To be used for bibliographies, sorted and arranged by computer systems, to speed this mammoth job and get cards out to libraries faster. Legislative reference service. May I help you? Free background material. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. We've already worked up. Is that background. for today's hearings? Mm -hmm. All right. Our senior specialist on foreign trade has already prepared some. Uh, yes, sir. I understand. I'll make it rush. This is LRS, the Legislative Reference Service of the Library of Congress, major research and informational center for our nation's Congress. Here each day, by phone, by mail, and by personal visit, come nearly 1,000 requests calling for anything from a spot report to a detailed analysis, taking anywhere from moments to months to fulfill. Information to assist members of the Senate and House of Representatives, their staffs, and the committees of Congress in the performance of their legislative duties. Let us suppose that the Senate Aeronautical and Space Science Committee sends a request to one of the various divisions of LRS with specialists in every major field for background information on the subject of use of the moon as a base for exploring space. The task of meeting the request is assigned by the division chief of the Science Policy Research Division to an LRS senior specialist and several research assistants. Can there be a moon station for man's venture into space? In the days and weeks that follow, LRS researchers locate a host of relevant materials, recent newspaper and magazine clippings on every area of space exploration, State Department reports relating to international treaties, technical papers of the National Aeronautical and Space Administration, as well as other government publications. The vast law library provides other answers precedents for international law of territories, the effect of existing treaties that may relate to the law of space, theories about space law. The resources of every division of the law library are tapped. The vast resources of the Russian collection, largest outside the Soviet Union, communist China's viewpoint. Well, here is a space law article written by a Chinese law professor. The main reading room is the hub of the library. Here, readers seeking books their public or university libraries lack search for them in the public catalog. The LRS specialist searches here, too, for other leads on his subject. Digging through thousands of reports in the library's science and technology collection, the contents of each reduced to microscopic size, in most cases the entire report contained on a single card, the LRS specialist is able to review the current thinking of the world's scientific community. The library's map collection is also of help, containing maps and views of every area of the world, from those antedating the voyage of Columbus to satellite maps of planet Earth and for the first time in man's history, a complete mapping of the moon. In the Legislative Reference Service, materials accumulate. And in the production of the report, the skills of a graphic artist. At last, after two months of concentrated work, the end product, 
one of more than 130,000 requests filled each year to assist members of Congress in the discharge of their legislative duties. The services of the Library of Congress are also extended to the scholar. Professor Lehrman's first stop is the library's manuscript collection. Primary source material for most historical research about the United States. Also reviewing microfilm of manuscripts in European archives. In the library's rare book collection, Dr. Lehrman will uncover other fragments. Here in Thomas Jefferson's private library, Elsewhere in the library, other scholars are also busy. In the Hispanic Foundation collection, a Latin American scholar finds material on his own country that makes his long trip to the United States worthwhile. In the library's unique collection of motion pictures, dating back to the birth of the cinema art, a motion picture producer finds one of the earliest color films made around the turn of the century with color applied by hand to each frame of the film. There is still another service rendered to the scholar by the library, providing photocopies of materials in the library's many collections. Using the library's vast newspaper and periodical collection, dating back to the early 1700s, a journalist is completing a study of coverage given by newspapers of the Union and Confederacy to the Civil War. Scholars working both in the library and afar are able to take advantage of numerous publications issued by the library. Many libraries use the Dewey Decimal Classification System, others the classification system of the Library of Congress. To cope with the flood of printed materials, more and more libraries make use of Library of Congress cataloging. On the bottom of a catalog card is first the Library of Congress classification number, next the Dewey Decimal number, last the card number by which libraries everywhere can order cards from the Library of Congress. Thus behind the catalogs of books in thousands of school, community, university and other libraries is the Library of Congress. Books and other materials from all over the world Books in every written language acquired by the Library of Congress through its multitude of exchange agreements and purchase arrangements. Today, the Library of Congress has a number of overseas operations to secure and catalog library materials of scholarly value. In some cases, materials for other major research libraries as well. Before they can be used, they must be cataloged. The Library of Congress has a staff of hundreds of professional multilingual catalogers producing the worksheets which eventually are transformed into catalog cards. In a government printing office plant, new catalog cards are produced. Millions of catalog cards for some 25,000 subscribers to the Library of Congress card service. Millions of orders for cards, sorted and arranged by computer systems to speed this mammoth job and get cards out to libraries faster. Millions of cards in stock to fill orders for the 75 million cards the library sells yearly. Its receipts going into the United States Treasury. Catalog cards on their way to libraries all over our nation. A multi-million dollar service undergoing full mechanization. For a new day is dawning in library science. As benefits of computerized handling of library data are made available to libraries throughout the country, 
with cataloging data flowing from the Library of Congress to thousands of other libraries. To be used for bibliographies, catalog cards, book catalogs, book pockets, book cards, book labels. Each day, the mail brings to the copyright office in the library over 1,000 applications for copyright registration, along with copies of each work, with much of this material becoming part of the library's own collections. In this copyright catalog are some 25 million cards, a history of America's creative accomplishments since 1870. Many come to the Library of Congress, drawn by their knowledge that it is the repository of our national heritage. The original drafts of some of our nation's most cherished documents, carefully preserved, are stored and displayed here. Since its beginnings in 1800, the Library of Congress has continued to grow. Now a third building is planned. Though its books are loaned only to members of Congress, to government agencies, and to other libraries, its research facilities are open to all adults seeking materials they cannot find elsewhere. The library in many ways exerts a major force in promoting our nation's cultural and intellectual life. Created by the Founding Fathers as a legislative library, today the Library of Congress serves all of our people, not only by assisting our Congress, but by serving also as the National Library of the United States.